Hello my friends! I am so excited. I am so excited today. Actually tonight it is 9 p.m. <laughs> but my package just came in a little while ago and I was like no no no. I have to film right now. I haven't been this excited for a Sephora haul in a really long time. I was recently on the Sephora website and I was looking at all the new makeup and there was so many, so many new makeup launches. I got really, really excited. And I'm um, not gonna lie, my pockets are not happy. My pockets are not happy about it. Just on this bad boy alone, okay, this is like $300. So I'm just, I'm just gonna dive right in. Welcome to my Sephora try on haul. I got this new GHD Unplugged On The Go cordless styler. It's a cordless, wireless flat iron, and that's amazing. The only other brand I know that has one is Dyson. There could be others out there, but I only know of the Dyson one. And to be honest, I don't really love the Dyson one all that much. It's good, it's nice, but it's so big, like it's so bulky that I really don't reach for it that much. I'm not even gonna lie. I love my Dyson Airwrap, but the, the cordless flat iron is not my favorite. I always use my GHD flat iron. I bought it just in case, like for traveling purposes, Purposes, but then <laughs> Corona came around and I stopped traveling so I really don't use it But I really wanted to test this one out for you guys and I wanted to do a whole review on it So if you want to see a separate video all about this, let me know the only thing is when I opened it <laughs> I got the package a little while ago and I was opening it it comes with this cute little bag. Look how cute this is. This is freaking tiny You can 100% travel with this you could even do your hair like in the passenger seat While your husband's driving or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your best friend or your mom. If you charge it, you can use it on the go. The only thing is, it's very small. It's a very, very tiny. I'm literally gonna take 500 years, 500 years using this. But it's okay, I really wanna put it to the test. Like, I wanna use it on my entire hair. I wanna see how long it takes for me to do my hair with this. And if the battery lasts the whole time and all of that. Comes with a little charger and yeah, it's a bag. So very excited, very excited. It's a bit small, but I'm very excited. Okay, so I purchased a bunch of other hair stuff as well, but I'm gonna dive into the makeup so we can do something to this face. Really quickly, I'm gonna pop on my Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum as my primer because I did not buy a new primer. And I wanna test out one of these foundations I got. So I wanna use a primer I know and love. Okay, so I bought three foundations. That's right, three. I don't know what came over me. This is a very spicy haul. And actually, two of these foundations are a little bit more luxe. I, okay, I need to stop with the British accent. I haven't been able to stop recently, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this foundation really intrigued me just because of the packaging alone. This is the Lawless Conceal the Deal Long Wear Full Coverage Foundation. And the packaging is just so cute, look at it. I love it. I don't know why, but I love it. It's like a little squeeze bottle, but it's like nice and firm, you know? It's not flimsy, and I love that it's like all black like this. And yeah, it's just a really interesting foundation. This is the one I actually want to try on today. The back of the box says, clean makeup that doesn't fuck around. And I like the sound of that, so here we go. I'm gonna use my brush to apply it on one side of my face and then go in with a beauty blender on the other side. But what's really interesting about this foundation is that it says it's self-setting. It's a long-wearing, lightweight, fluid foundation that delivers modern full coverage with a self-setting natural matte finish that feels fresh and weightless on the skin. It's supposed to be blendable and buildable, and it also has like a serum feel to it that's supposed to fuse with the skin to even it out, blur your pores, smooth texture, and cover imperfections. Okay, this is the foundation with the brush. It actually does have really, really great coverage. I barely applied any to my brush and a little goes a very long way. But let's try the sponge now. It's so freaking liquidy though, like, you see that? Oh, lands on my finger. <laughs> Stop with the accent. Whatever accent that is, it's actually not a British accent. I don't know what accent I'm doing. Okay, so I kind of see what this foundation means by it being self-setting because I don't really think you need to blend it in that much. I do really like how it looks with a sponge, but I honestly think it, it, it looks the same. It looks the same with a brush. Maybe the sponge side looks a hair more natural, but they're both very, very similar. The only thing I don't like is how it looks in between my brows and around my nose. Every matte foundation 
looks bad in that area. But for it being a matte foundation, it's not drying. It does have a natural matte finish. But I like that it's not tacky. It like sets down really nicely. My skin doesn't look like scaly or too dry, which I was worried. I really like the coverage and yeah, pretty good. Hopefully it really is super long wearing. And then the other two foundations I got are definitely more on the natural side, a little bit more dewy. This is the Dior Forever Skin Glow 24 Hour Radiant Perfection Skin Caring Foundation with sunscreen. It has SPF 35 and I honestly bought this because I think this is a foundation I heard Jamie Page talk about recently and I usually love all the foundations she likes and I'm pretty sure she's been loving this foundation so I wanted to pick it up. I wanted to give it a go and I am very excited to try it. I I got two WO, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's my shade. I'm usually pretty good at matching myself online, like guessing based off of the color description. Like I got the shade Sesame in the Lawless Foundation and I think it was a pretty good match. It's a little bit more yellow than my natural skin tone. But yeah, anyway, very, very excited to try the Skin Glow by Dior. And then this is the YSL Bare Look Tint. It is like a skin tint, like a like a, like a skin tint. It says you get the best of both worlds with this guy. It's a skincare makeup hybrid. And yeah, that's all I know about it. I'll probably test this out like on my stories when I do my makeup with you guys. But yeah, I got mine in the shade number five. We'll see. All right, moving on. I picked up two different concealers. Now I get so self-conscious when I say the word concealer. I also get self-conscious about the word self-conscious. I can't say conscious very well. Self-conscious? I got two concealers. <laughs> One of them is from this brand called Rose Ink. I've never tried anything from this brand, but I picked up this concealer and also a cream blush from them, and I'm really excited. I love testing out new brands. So I got this Soft Light Luminous Hydrating Concealer, and the packaging is really, really nice. Like, it's kind of cool. It's like very unique, very interesting. I love this frosted bottle, and I love this shape. I got mine in the shade number 20, and then I also got the Turn Up The Base Butter Silk Concealer from the brand One Size Beauty, which is Patrick Starr's makeup brand. So I wanted to show my support and pick up a concealer. I got mine in the shade Light Three, but it is a little bit too deep for me. Like when I opened it earlier, I was like, oh, it might be a little too dark for my under eyes, but we're gonna test it out anyway. But the One Size Beauty Concealer is supposed to be a medium to full, buildable coverage, multi-use concealer that helps smooth and cover unwanted texture, even tones, and the appearance of dark circles. I think this one is a little bit more intense. Like it says, it's highly pigmented, and I think the Rose Ink one is a little bit more like natural and dewy, but let's see. Oh, this rose ink one might be too deep for me too. I'm also going to take it on my lid just a little bit. Well, that actually has really, really great coverage. I thought it was gonna be a lot more like dewy and liquidy. It is too deep for me though. If I would have just gotten one shade lighter, I think I would have been good. But that's honestly really, really good coverage, right? That's really nice. I like that. And it has a very natural finish. It's not like too dewy or matte. Going in with one size on this side. I will say the rose ink one is a little bit messy. Like when you open it, it's like kind of goopy and like everywhere. This one is a little bit cleaner, more neat. The doe foot is much, much smaller on this one too, which I don't mind the size. I like them small, I like, I like them big. Probably should have used a different brush, but it's all right. A little goes a super long way with that rose ink one though. Or maybe I just applied a lot more because there was so much on the wand. Let me just add a little more of this. Okay, so I think the one size one has a bit more coverage than the rose ink one. And I was honestly expecting that. This one is a bit more pigmented, even though I did add a little bit more on this side. Maybe, let me, let me see, let me add just a hair more of the rose ink one. Looking at them up close though, I think I prefer the one size. Like it looks a little bit smoother underneath my eyes, but this one is nice too though. I don't know which one I prefer, honestly. Can you guys tell the difference? So after, um, 
KVD Beauty or Kat Von D Beauty rebranded and they got like new owners and this whole thing happened, I didn't really try out any of the products. But I was recently watching a video on, it was like a full face of KVD after they reformulated some stuff and added some things to their line. And this really, really caught my attention. Like I got really excited when I saw these, but when I went to go buy them off of the Sephora website, like all of the best colors were sold out. These were the only two that were available, so I bought them both. And these are the KVD, which now is stands for like vegan beauty, KVD vegan beauty. These are the dazzle sticks and they're long wearing eyeshadows and they're very sparkly and very beautiful and they look like little lipsticks. Like this is the packaging and they're like very dazzly, very sparkly. The two shades that were left were this like reddish pinky situation and this intense silvery one. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of this red one and just like rub it all over my lid. And then I also picked up an everlasting lip liner, which I honestly don't know why because I didn't love these to begin with. Like they didn't really last that long on my lips, but I picked up the shade Hawkwind. And then I'm super excited for these as well. I picked up some of their pomades. This is their 24 hour super brow long wear pomade. So these are for your eyebrows, but I definitely bought these to use as eyeliners. But you can use this like for anything. Eyeliner, brows, whatever you want. Lip liner, lipstick, whatever. So I got the shade Roxy Purple, which is a really, really freaking intense purple. I got Aubergine, which kind of reminds me of Midnight Train on my nails. Very beautiful. And then I got Scarlet, which is a really intense red. I obviously will show you swatches, but I definitely want to use, I think, Aubergine on my eyes today. And yeah, that's what I got from KVD. So let's, let's test some of this out. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Force Field, which this name is so funny to me because this is actually what everybody called my house in high school. So my dad uh, never let me leave the house. I had a very, 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 very strict father and he never let me go out with my friends ever. <laughs> but he always encouraged my friends to come over my house. He was like, you can't leave. But if you want, they can come here. <laughs> and so that's usually how it happened. My friends were usually always at my house, but it became like a joke. Like it became like this thing that my house was like the force field that I wasn't allowed to leave the force field. And yeah, every time I hear that word, I just think about high school. These dry very quickly, which I do like. It still gives you time to like move it around and there isn't any fallout. Usually any sparkly anything on your lid has fallout and I don't have any glitter on my face, just on my eyes. This formula is really, really nice. So that is very, very impressive. Really quickly, I'm gonna throw on some eyeliner. I'm gonna take a little bit of aubergine and I'm gonna apply that with my Sigma and Beauty Bird brush. Oh, by the way, I added some eyeshadow to my lower lash line and a little bit to my crease in case you were curious about that. I think because this is a pomade, the formula is a little bit easier to work with. I don't know what it is. It's just like a um, like a softer formula, which I really like. All right, so far so good. I really, really like that color. I'm just gonna curl my lashes before I pop on some mascara because guess what? <laughs> I bought four. So this is the one that I'm most excited for and it's probably the one I'm gonna use. This is so cool. This is from Kaja. I love Kaja Beauty. Like their stuff is really interesting, really unique. This is their Wink Lash Trio. It has a volumizing one, a lengthening one, and then there's a lash primer slash brow serum gel. And look at this, look at this. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like this big fat thing and then you get that. You get three mascaras, but they connect. This is just so fun, so, so fun. So I'm gonna try the clear gel first. It's labeled number one, and then the volumizing one is labeled number two, and then you finish it off with the lengthening one. So yeah, this is the one I'm gonna try out, and I'm actually just gonna dive right in. I'm a little bit skeptical about the clear one though, I'm not gonna lie, because I don't really love clear lash primers. I prefer the white ones, but we shall see. All right, now let's volumize. Okay, I really like that. I was noticing though, like the more I would apply, the like the thicker it was getting, so I was like, maybe less is more. But let's pop on the lengthening one. Oh, 
Okay, I have to test this out a little more, but I'm not 100% on how I feel about it. It's giving me a little bit like twiggy vibes, which I like, but it's a little too clumpy. I could probably try it out again, like without the primer part, but then it like defeats the purpose of the little trio. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. I have to try it out without some eyeliner, like on just like bare lashes, no eyeshadow, but I will let you know. I'll let you know. Oh, and then the other mascaras I got, the three other mascaras I got. This is the Lancome Hypnose Mascara. This is a very, very popular mascara. It's been around for years, but I got it because I really, really wanted a brown mascara. And then I got this Dior one because I really wanted another blue mascara. So I got the Dior Show Mascara Professional Buildable, you know, their Dior Show Mascara. The only other blue mascara I have is my ColourPop one, which I love. It's a great mascara, but I wanted to try another one. So, you know, at least it wasn't like four black ones, you know? But then I also got this one, which is a black one. This is the Patrick Ta Major Volume, Mas Major Volume Mascara. This is the other one I really wanted to test out. I was very excited to try this. I love really voluminous mascaras, and I have a feeling this one's gonna be that, but I could be wrong, we shall see. Have you guys tried this mascara? Let me know your thoughts, I'm very curious. I'll probably try it um, like when I do my makeup with you guys on stories, but this is what it looks like. I like really simple packaging like this, I gotta be honest, and I love little fiber ones like this. I prefer these over the plastic ones. Speaking of Patrick Ta, I'm actually gonna save these two products for a video that I'm working on. I wanna do like a testing viral TikTok makeup kind of video. Like using makeup that went really viral on TikTok. And this was actually one of them. This is from the brand Refai and this is their Brow Sculpt Shape and Hold Gel with Lamination Effect. That sounds crazy. Um, you know what I'm noticing though about this foundation? Now that it's been sitting on my face, I see a nice line across my forehead and it's really sinking into my smile lines. Usually more matte foundations will do that. My skin isn't 21 anymore, you know? When they're a little bit more matte like this, they tend to settle into my lines. So I am noticing that. Just keep that in mind if you have very dry skin like me. But it still looks really nice. Anyway, this Refai like brow lamination thing was going super viral on TikTok. So yeah, I wanted to give it a shot because I love the look of laminated brows. Like really intense, like gelled up, sculpted brows. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm really, really, really excited to try this. So I want to throw that into the like viral TikTok makeup video, which will be coming very soon. And I saw that Patrick Ta actually had a product that was very, very similar. This is the Major Brow Lamination Gel, which I hear it has a very similar formula. This is what it looks like. Mm, it's like nice and sticky. Oh, I'm so excited. You're supposed to like brush it up and then like laminate it and yeah. I cannot wait. Oh, this is what the Refi one looks like, just so you can see it. You have like the the gel on one side here. In the cap, you have the brush, so you can like laminate the brows. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. Speaking of Refai, I picked up two other products from the brand. This is another one of those brands, by the way, that I had never really heard of and I've never tried any of their products. But I got their cream bronzer and their cream blush. Let me tell you that powder brush blush is so last year. Everybody's coming out with cream blush and it's so exciting. The only thing is, I was swatching these earlier and this cream bronzer in the shade Sand is a very warm. Perhaps a hair too warm for my liking. It's a, it's a little terracotta-y. But when I was like swatching it on the back of my hand, the formula is actually very, very thin. One of the thinnest cream bronzers I've ever tried. I don't know how to explain it. It's like sheer and thin, which... <laughs> I already said, but I really, really like that. And I think it would be nice to like add on top of my cooler, more like neutral toned contour slash bronzer. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my Makeup by Mario light contour. I'm gonna add a little bit of this like to contour my face and then I will go over it with this. Like I'll try this in a second. I'm noticing my bronzer looking a little crusty around my forehead here, like as I'm applying it because of the foundation. Like, you know when you have, how do I explain this? You know when you have really dry skin because you've been like out in the sun a lot, your skin is peeling a little bit, you got like a little sunburnt situation. And when you go to apply makeup, like on top of your skin, when it's kind of been peeling or it's really, really dry underneath, it looks a little scaly. That's kind of what it's looking like around my forehead a bit. Not on my cheeks at all. It actually looks really smooth 
and really good on my cheeks, but around my forehead, I guess because it's like extra dry there, it looks a little scaly. Next time I use this foundation, I will probably wear like a very, very, very hydrating primer underneath, like something very slippy because my skin is just that dry. Now I'm gonna go in with the Refai bronzer, but I'm actually gonna use my, I have hair everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna use my beauty blender. It's a little dry, like it's not as damp as it was a little while ago, but that's all right. Okay, I actually really, really like that. I'm not sure if you guys could even see that, but because it, it's such a thin formula, like I swear, if you guys like swatch this on the back of your hand, it's so thin and it kind of has like a little bit of a sheer, not glow, because it's not like dewy or anything, but because it's such a lightweight cream bronzer, I feel like that oranginess doesn't really show up that much. It just looks like warm and beautiful. I don't know. I didn't think I was gonna like it this much because of the color, but I, I really like it. So natural and light, and I love it, I love it. So now I'm gonna try out the cream blush as well, but I have another cream blush I want to try out. So I wanna do like one on one cheek and one on the other, and then and then I'll mix them. Rose Ink also has a cream blush. This is their Blush Divine Radiant Lip and Cheek Color. So you can use the, you can use this on your lips as well. This is in the shade Heliotrope. I could never say that correctly. But I really, really like this packaging. This branding kind of reminds me of Rare Beauty. It's a very, very pretty little, little package. And the blush itself looks so interesting. It's almost like textured in the pan. And yeah, I'm going to use my beauty blender also. This heliotrope blush looks so dewy. It's actually less dewy than I thought it was gonna be. Oh wow, I really like that. That color is stunning. It looks so much prettier on the cheek than it does in the pan. I mean, in the pan, it's, it's very beautiful, but it looks so nice when it's like on your cheeks, it looks a little bit warmer and glowy, so pretty, and such a good formula, like it doesn't feel tacky at all. I'm gonna take the same same sponge, which I know has a little bit of a mixture on it, but that's fine. And I'm gonna take the Refi Cream Blush, and this is in the shade Rose. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me like a million years to open this for the first time, but now it's easy to open. It was like stuck before. This is also like a very tiny, tiny little package compared to this one. I guess a very small. Yeah, and immediately, like I just place it on my face. This is a lot more pigmented than the rose ink one, which again, it just depends on what you prefer. I do, however, really, really love this color. It's like a soft, youthful flush. I love light pink shades like this in like a cream formula. It looks so like young and fresh. The rose ink one has a little bit more of a glow to it. I don't know if you can tell. This one is a little bit more natural, but that could also be the fact that I applied a lot more of the rose ink one to like build up the color. And this I have like barely applied, but no, still it has, yeah, it definitely has a more natural finish than this one. I, lo I freaking love this rose ink one. This one is really beautiful too, like the color itself. I think both are winners for sure, but if I had to pick one, rose ink. Okay, so I mixed them both. I tried to make them as even as possible. It's a little off, but it's fine. <laughs> really excited about those two products. I love falling in love with new blush. But anyway, really quickly, I'm going to pop on the Hawkwind lip liner I was showing you guys earlier because I'm about to try on a new lip product. Okay, so this is a super, super pigmented lip liner. Like, holy crap. It's almost like too pigmented and, and like slippy. I like something with a little bit more grip. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the inside of my lip bare like this because I wanna try out this product. This actually did not have good reviews on Sephora, which honestly, none of the Too Faced lip injection products have good reviews on Sephora. Like, nobody likes them, but I really, really do. So they just came out with the lip injection liquid lipstick and this is in the shade give them lip so i really wanted to test this out this color is nothing oh my gosh it smells really really good really really good oh this is so very very pigmented liquid lipstick i'm just curious to see how this is gonna be like plumping when oh 
I'm starting to feel the tingle already. Hopefully it like plumps and leaves your skin, um, your lips looking like smooth. Cause that's what I love about the gloss. All right, so far so good. I like the little tingly feel. I like it, but I'm not sure if I can really see a difference the way that I see it in the gloss, you know? Like in the lip injection gloss, where you can visibly see a difference. I don't, I don't think I can. All right, now that my makeup is totally done, we can finish up the haul with the four hair products I bought. So this was really, really exciting for me, guys, because I'm obsessed with the Byredo perfume um, Mojave Ghost. It is my favorite Byredo perfume out of all the ones I've tried. It is so good, so sophisticated and yummy. I will leave the notes of Mojave Ghost right here from Byredo because it is incredible. And recently, Way, the hair care brand, collabed with Byredo and they created a Mojave Ghost leave-in conditioner. This leave-in conditioner isn't new, like the way has had this leave-in conditioner for a while. I personally have never tried it, I don't think so, but I know it's been around for a while, I just, I never picked it up, I never had it, but when I saw that they collabed with Byredo and it smells like Mojave Ghost, I had to, I had to get my hands on it. I'm so freaking excited. This smells just like the perfume. Oh, oh, my, oh I love it so much. I cannot wait to spray this all over my hair. Hopefully the, Formula is good though. Like hopefully it's a good leave-in. And then I got another leave-in. This is also brand new from the brand Gisu. I, I always forget how to say this. But it's a really like luxe, honey infused line. Their hair mask is really, really nice. A lot of their products are very, very pricey, but I, I just love the branding and the packaging and the smell, like the scent is so good. And they just came out with their honey infused leave-in conditioner. So I wanted to pick it up. And I'm such a sucker for packaging and I love this kind of packaging. It reminds me of like gloss vibes and I really like how this smells too nothing compared to Mojave Ghost but I like that like honey scent so yeah excited for that and then the last two products I got are from Living Proof also very excited for these this is the vanishing oil and I recently bought this because this is the product that was in Megan Fox's hair at the VMAs I'm gonna put a picture of her right here you know what I'm talking about she was wearing that see-through dress and she looked like all wet she looked incredible. She had a bunch of living proof products in her hair, but this was mainly what gave her that wet look. Like she had a ton of this in her hair, so I, you know, I had to get it. I love anything that's anti-frizz anyway, and I really, really love living proof. It's a silicone-free oil treatment that stops frizz, stops frizz and adds healthy shine. So cannot wait. And then I also got the their Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. I actually used this today for the first time. My hair was super greasy earlier today. I'm talking like greasy, like I definitely have to wash my hair. But I mean, after I used this, I felt like it really did soak up the oils. It's a pretty good dry shampoo. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of uh, startled me a little bit when I first sprayed it onto my hair because it is a very, very, very white dry shampoo. Like you only spray a little bit of this and your whole hair is gray. Like it is really, really intense, but it's actually very easy to comb through. I find that some dry shampoos, you really have to like pat your head, wiggle your fingers up in there. Like you have to do that for a while for like that cast to go away. But for as white as this comes out, it is so easy to brush out and it feels really nice. It smells good. It says it's a dry shampoo that actually cleans the hair. So not only is it adding softness and shine, but it's also cleaning your hair with advanced technology or something, I don't know. Yeah, I bought this little bottle just in case I didn't like it, but I think I might buy the big one because uh, so far so good. But uh, yeah, okay guys, that's everything that I got at Sephora. We got a bunch of good stuff today. It was a hefty, hefty haul. <laughs> but I feel like we discovered some, some good gems. I loved those blushes so much, definitely the stars for me. Leave me a comment down below, let me know if you've tried any of these products, what are your thoughts, and if there's anything at Sephora that I haven't looked at, haven't picked up, and you think I should, leave it in the comments below and I will definitely check it out. But yeah guys, that completes this video. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.